The wide receiver market continues to be a hot spot in the NFL offseason. Stefan Diggs, the latest ball catcher to cash in with a new four-year, $104 million deal with the Bills last week. His extension comes in the wake of a busy offseason that saw both trades and free agency reset the market in a big way. The biggest moves, of course, speed demon Tyreek Hill sent to the Dolphins from the Chiefs and Devontae Adams, who shipped to the Raiders from the Packers. It's worth noting that 10 of the top 15 wide receiver contracts have been signed in the last two years alone. Here's a few names from the class of 2019 that could be set to cash in before, during, or immediately after the 2022 season. DK Metcalf in there, AJ Brown, of course, one of the top receivers from that class of 2019, Terry McLaurin, and the Swiss Army knife, Debo Samuel. All of them looking to earn over $20 million. All right, with the market undergoing significant reconstruction in the offseason, that means teams are going to have to adjust their budgets as they look to try and hang on to these top pass catchers. And for more on that and what the future may hold for the trio that we mentioned, the quadruple actually, let's now welcome in senior NFL writer Jason Lockett for GLC. When you look at the numbers and how the market has been adjusted slash corrected during the offseason, what does that mean for a guy like a Debo Samuel, a top five wide receiver in 2021 and his future in San Francisco? Well, it, it certainly means uh, he's going to be paid. He, he's going to be someone who's able to join that upper echelon of top five wide receivers. I don't know about a trade, though. If you look at Kyle Shanahan's history, he's always he was a receiver himself. He came up coaching the receiver position. There's certain key areas in his offense where he's going to be willing to spend big time. And, and frankly, it's not always quarterback. It's certainly not running back where those guys are seen as interchangeable. He, he wants to have an elite fullback. He wants to have a stud left tackle. And he needs to have a wide receiver who he can use as a Swiss Army knife, who's a true number one, who can who can he can kind of run his offense through. And that's obviously Debo right now. But you go back to having a Julio Jones in his prime in Atlanta. You go back to him coming up with the Texans and having an Andre Johnson. And he uses this uh, young man in ways he didn't use those others. But there, there's always someone filling that role. The price of doing business there has certainly gone up, but that's a team that's generally put its money in its defensive line. And again, as I said, a few positions on the offensive line. Trey Lance is going to be a bargain for them. They'll trade Garoppolo and his $25 million salary at some point. Um, I know Debo's scrubbing his social media and everybody's playing the feud right now, but I, I, that's a player that I would imagine San Francisco opens up the coffers for. For 1,400 yards receiving on 77 receptions last year. All right, with Russell Wilson moving on to Denver, there are all kinds of questions about what that could mean for the wide receiver core in Seattle. Of course, talking about DK Metcalf. What about Metcalf and his future in Seattle post-Wilson, JLC? Yeah, look, I, I don't think uh, Russell Wilson has much to do with, with him at this point. Russell in Denver's got a... A uh, very promising group of young pass catchers there. Uh, and I think, if anything, you'd want to have more weapons in place in Seattle if you're going with a young quarterback. And I don't think that's Drew Locke. Maybe that turns out to be um, Baker Mayfield. Maybe that turns out to be someone in this draft. But they don't have to do anything with, with Metcalf right now. And Metcalf is not coming off a season like Debo Samuel. He's coming off a down season for him, in part because Russell Wilson's lack of availability. Uh, remember, Devontae Adams was tagged and traded, right? That could be the end game for one of these kids we're going to talk about here. Um, they play out the bulk of their rookie contract for value with their current team. Their team extends them via the franchise tag and then uses that as a mechanism a precursor to a trade. Well, and you look at Metcalf, as you mentioned, numbers weren't there last season, didn't hit 1,000 yards, did register a dozen touchdowns, but when you have Drew Locke and Jacob Eason as 1-2 on the QB chart in Seattle, obviously there is some concern about production moving forward for a guy like DK Metcalf. All right, let's talk about Washington wide receiver Terry McLaurin. Isn't even making a million dollars a season when you look at this group, but all that is very likely to change very soon. Set for a nice bump in pay, but will it be in Washington? Certainly should be, and, and I think it will be. I mean, you look at the construct of that football team. They can't keep letting their best players walk. You know, Brandon Sheriff, their best offensive lineman that they've drafted and developed there in a long time, is gone. Before that, it was Trent Williams, the, the elite left tackle we were just talking about. 
in terms of the 49ers and who they pay. Um, not a lot of money in the quarterback position, right? They're taking Carson Wentz at the tail end of this deal um, that's been pawned off a couple of times now by the Eagles first, right? Then the Colts. So that's not a humongous investment. They are going to have to start paying some of their young defensive linemen who are emerging, but like it, it's an NFL team. You know, Daniel Snyder gets $360 million a year from the rights to broadcast these games alone. You got to pay somebody, and, and obviously Carson Wentz is, is, is not um, an MVP right now. He's not going to make guys better. He needs weapons, and they need a legitimate deep, thro- deep ball threat to expand the scope of that offense. Yes, it's going to cost them much more now than it may have, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But, uh, again, that, that's just the reality of the NFL. Uh, with where they are right now, trying to get a new stadium built, trying to reconnect with their fan base, I, I can't fathom them not going full bore to try to extend this player. Lastly, let's talk about A.J. Brown. We talked about D.K. Metcalf. His numbers took a hit. So did A.J. Brown's last season. He has, uh, he of course has uh, battled some depression. Uh, he has op- spoken openly about battling depression. So when you look at A.J. Brown, his numbers, he was really the top rookie of that 2019 class when you looked at his numbers, that certainly that first season. But the numbers took a hit last year. What does his future look like in Tennessee? Well, look, I don't generally read a whole lot into what coaches and GMs say on the record about individual players vis-a-vis trades because often they're just saying whatever they think they have to say to try to build the most trade value or or, or to try to send the signal that they're trying to send uh, around the league, whether it's truthful or not. But I I, I do believe that the Tennessee Titans um, at this moment are rebuffing trade overtures for A.J. Brown. I think they see themselves being in a bit of a finite window with as that team's presently constructed. Derrick Henry's not going to be a superhero forever. You know, Ryan Tannehill, I, I think they're kind of in um, play it out mode with, with him right now. And, 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 you know, they're not ready to pull the plug on that yet. But I think they're also hedging their bets and knowing we might only be going down this, win, this, this road with him for another year or two. So I would be very surprised if if they made any sort of move right now with him. Now, if he doesn't get paid immediately, does does that become even more of an issue this offseason? That remains to be seen how easy it will be to slow play things with him. Um, But I expect them to exhaust options with securing or determining at least what the price point for A.J. Brown's going to be long term before they entertain a future without him. Senior NFL writer Jason LaConfora talking about the resetting of the wide receiver market with us here on CBS Sports HQ and, of course, some uh, receivers that are going to be looking to get paid as that market has reset. For all the latest discussion of all things NFL-related, be sure you're listening to the Pick 6 podcast. Will Brinson and the Super Friends giving you everything you need to know. It's your daily fix. You can download and follow the Pick 6 podcast wherever you get your podcast audio. You can also watch the program on YouTube. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.